Are you talking about the heat transfer? I, I think um, the professor in their class already changed the uh, exam time to the. Ready? Um, oh, I think that last time was also talking about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's during the class. I think he, he already changed it. it the introduction to numeric methods. He already changed that one. So a good news, a bad news. Uh, the good one is that we will not have class on Monday, so you can have a long uh, weekend, uh, take some rest. And the bad news is that we will have exam next Friday, Friday night. So next Wednesday will be a exam review class. And next Friday, well, during the class time, there's no class, but we will have exam at night. And I will have office hour during the regular office hour time. So it's between 12.30 to 1.30, I don't know. Yeah, so that's the schedule for the next week. And uh, I think we can start the class today. So in the last class, we talked about uh, the general, generalized Hooke's law. So basically we ex expand, let's say, originally we only talked about tension compression in the axial direction. So the generalized uh, Hooke's law mean that, okay, now we have the tension compression in the X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. And what is the relation between the stress and the strain and everything? And it's, be careful, it's not the uh, strain equal to stress of a young small chest anymore. That is only for axial loading, only have tension or compression in the X direction in one dimension. If it's the, uh, we have the force applied compressive or tensile force applied in three dimension, then we need to use the generalized Hooke's law we talked about in last class. So that is like everything in three dimension, but only involve the normal stress, normal strain. So in today's class, I want to talk about the, what if there are, um, well, in a more generalized concept, what if there are normal stress and shear stress, shear strain, um, in all three dimensions. So we'll not uh, go very deep on that, but conceptually we need to know, uh, like if I give you tau xy, tau xz, tau zy, you should know what it means, or gamma xy, gamma xz, uh, based on the subscript. Uh, for the detailed calculation, you may take more advanced class for that, but this one just like um, a basic conceptual, what if there is normal stress, shear stress, uh, and normal strain, shear strain, on um, uh, for the multi axial loading. Um, so in in the textbook, they separate into like two chapters, but um, I think it's better to put it here. So this is uh, chapter one point four. Stress under the general uh, loading condition. and stress component. So let's assume that we have a structure in three dimension space. So uh, we normally assume this is x direction and upward as the 
y direction and of course out of the plane out of x y plane is the z direction and we have a uh, structure uh, let's say this is a structure we're going to talk about It's supposed to be something like a potato in 3D space, but of course, I don't know how to draw a potato in 3D, in 3D space. So let's assume this is the um, structure or a potato in a 3D space. And now we have a force in apply all direction at all, or a uh, random point on this structure. So let's say we have F1, F2, F3, and F4. And this, um, let's change the direction a little bit. So, so as I said, the direction of the force are random. There are, can, they can point towards any direction in this three space and the a uh, point where the force applied is also random on the structure. So we can kind of feel that, okay, this is not just normal stress, normal strain anymore. It will generate uh, the shear stress, shear strain. So in this situation, let's say, if I have a specific point inside this structure, and let's say at this point Q, um, and I want to know what are the stress at this point, right? So if I can figure out a general, uh, a general uh, like a uh, way to find the stress at this point. I can find stress at any point. And then we can find the maximum stress in, uh, in this structure. And then we can compare it with what material is this structure made of. And we can know, okay, it's, if this structure, for given structure, for given material, um, and for given loading condition, will it fail or not, right? So this is like a basic idea of how we do the structure analysis. So let's start from the, this single point. And for this single point, uh, what we can do is that, okay, we know that uh, this is 3D space, so we can cut through this point using a plane perpendicular to the X direction, perpendicular to the Y direction, and perpendicular to the Z direction, right? So let's start from the using a plane cut through this point uh, perpendicular to the X axis. So for any plane that is perpendicular to that axis, we call it the, that plane, right? So X plane means the uh, plane that is perpendicular to the X axis. So for this one, we can consume, we, we can assume, we can assume that it's um, something I really don't know. So let's say this is the plane that is cut through the point Q and this is the X plane. And on this plane, uh, there's a small square, which is a very small square that is around the point Q. And on this plane we have, of course, we know that there should be normal stress or uh, the force component is normal force. And we have the shear force. The shear force on this X plane can be either in Y direction or in Z direction. And uh, all the others that are not in the Y direction or Z direction can be uh, resolved into component of the Y direction, Z direction. So let's say we have the shear force. So superscript X is X plane. Y means the direction is Y. And similarly, we have the shear force on X plane, sorry, in the Z direction. This right also is, is too confusing to write here. Delta V, V means shear force on the X plane in the Z direction. So now these are the three force components uh, applied on the small square. Um, 
the small square I choose here around the point Q. So that's why we have the delta V, delta P, right? It's only the force applied on this small area. And uh, the superscript X means it's X plane, which means the plane is perpendicular to the X axis. And the, of course, for normal force is XX, right? And for the shear force, if it in the Y direction, Y direction, this is subscript, subscript. Z direction, subscript. So this is the basic notation we're gonna use uh, for the rest of semester. If we talk about the shear force, internal shear, uh, shear force and uh, normal force. And now we know that, okay, the question is, we know the force applied here at this point uh, on the small area and what is the stress? And we know that the stress is force over area, right? And if we want to know the stress at that point, so mathematically, it should be a limit. So the sigma x at that point, at point Q, we can write as delta P x. If the area is delta A, so at that point, the stress should be when, e, when delta A gradually get to zero. So let's say we gradually make the delta A, the area here, getting smaller and smaller and getting closer to the point Q. And then in the end, the sigma X will calculate here is the sigma S as it's a point Q. And similarly, we can have the same thing for tau XY is shear force on the X plane in the Y direction divided by delta A and when that a equal to zero. And for the shear stress, uh, shear force in the z direction, sorry. Delta V, Z, X, Delta A. So it's more like we we kind of uh, imagine that this area getting smaller and smaller and converge to one point, and and this value is the stress at that point, and mathematically it means that the delta converge to a point, the area converge to a point. Um, so this is everything: the stress, normal stress, shear stress in the x plane, and similarly we can have the y plane. So let's say uh, now we cut through this point uh, using a plane that is perpendicular to the y axis. So it's more like cut through the point like this, right? And I can So now I still choose a small area around the point Q on this Y plane. And on this Y plane, now I have, of course, the normal force. Delta P, now it becomes delta P Y. The superscript is the uh, uh, Y plane. And the same thing on the Y plane, we have shear stress, shear force, internal shear force, uh, delta V. Y plane in X direction. And this is delta V in Y plane in Z direction. And similarly, we can find using this internal force on this small area, we can find the stress, normal stress, shear stress at that point on this plane. So sigma y equal to delta v, y, delta a. And when this small area delta a converge to a point and tau yz, 
yx equal to shear force, internal shear force on the y plane in x direction, delta A, when delta A converges to a point, tau yz. So these are the three components, stress components uh, on the Y plane. And uh, of course, now we have X plane, we have Y plane, we have a Z plane. So Z plane basically, let's say uh, the screen itself is a Z plane and we use this plane cutting through the point Q. And so for this one, uh, so because it's very similar, I would do this one very quickly. So let's say this is a, uh, uh, Z plane cutting through point Q. And the same thing, we have a small area. We choose a small area around the point Q. And on this plane, we have normal internal normal force. We put it as delta P Z. And shear force on this small area, delta V on the Z plane in Y direction, delta V on Z plane in X direction. Now on this plane for the stress, we have the normal stress sigma Z, which is normal internal internal normal force, delta P Z divided by delta A And on this plane, we have the tau Z X. And same thing, tau Z Y. So now we are done this on all three phases, and on all each on each phases we have the stress component in each in each direction. So let's say if we can find all these nine component stress component, we can say that state of stress at that point is determined, right? We have the normal stress shear stress on x plane, y plane, z plane. If we know all these nine components, we know the state of stress of that point. And of course, for the other, for the, let's say, if it's an inclined plane, uh, inclined uh, in, in either direction, then it's more of like, depend on what is the inclined angle. And we learned that in for 1D bar situation, it's going it to get more complicated, but we know we should find if once we know the angle, we can figure out what is the stress on that plane based on all these nine components. It's all depend on the, all these nine components, right? Um, so, for this one, if we put in one uh, small cube to put, put all this nine stress on a on one small cube around the point Q, we can write like this. So this point is completely arbitrary, right? It, it doesn't have to be the centroid. It's, it's, it's not central or anything. I just choose an arbitrary uh, a random point. So we can generalize, have a generalized uh, concept. Then you can use this concept to find anything, find the stress at any point. That's the final goal. So okay, it's, thank you. You're welcome. I, I, it's like I happen to draw it in the, on the centroid, but it's not central, it's a random point. So now, we have these nine components. If I want to put all these nine components uh, on a small cube around the point Q, then I can put it like this. So 
uh, the x, y, z coordinates, it doesn't change. It's always like this. So now we know that uh, this plane is an x plane, right? So on this x plane, we have, um, let's use different color. Uh, sigma x. Tau x y. And tau x z. So this is all the stress on the x plane. And similarly, we can have uh, stress on the y plane. So on the y plane, we have sigma y tau y x and tau y z. Similarly, on the z plane, we have the sigma z. Let's change the color. So this is the sigma z, normal stress. And for the shear stress, we have the tau yz is the shear stress on the tau z y, on the z plane in the y direction. And tau z x. So this for when we talk about, okay, ask you to determine the state of stress at a specific point in the structure. So this is how, how we say, okay, this, if we can find all these nine components, we can say that, okay, we, we have determined the state of stress. So normally uh, the result we put in a, uh, we write, we put in a two by two, you know, thrust matrix. So um, I think it's better also use the uh, color. On the X plane, we have the um, sigma X, tau X, Y, tau X, Z. And on the Y plane, we have sigma Y, tau Y, X, tau y z. And on the z plane, this is a sigma z and tau z x tau z y. So this is a state of stress. Um, at a point at a random point. We have all components in the X plane, in the X plane, in the Y plane, in the Z plane. And on this plane, we have uh, in the X direction, where sigma X, sometimes some professor use sigma XX, some, uh, but some professor will use waste of life. Why use XX? Because normal stress is always uh, either XX, Y, Y, DZ. So they just use sigma X, sigma Y, sigma Z. But if you want to use make it like easier to understand subscript. So everything, this is everything in the X plane and in X direction, Y direction, Z direction. And this is everything in the Y plane, X direction, Y direction, Z direction. And everything in the Z plane, X direction, Y direction, Z direction. So probably now you can figure out, okay, for the subscript of the stress, um, the first one normally indicate the plane. And the second one is the direction of that component. So let's say if it's the, the first group, if it's Z, it means that it's a plane perpendicular to the Z axis. If it's X, of course, it's a plane that perpendicular to the X direction. That's normally how we define, define the plane 
in mechanical engineering, right? It's, it's consistent for all the classes. Um, so now we have these nine components, but it does not mean that all these nine components, uh, if, a, if your structure is in the equilibrium, it does mean that all these nine components are different because consider that uh, your structure is in equilibrium, there should be a equilibrium. Uh, we can find some relation between, let's say, the shear stress, tau xy, tau x, tau xz, tau xz, tau zx, and zy, yz. Because um, if they are, they are different, they might rotate the structure, then your structure is not in equilibrium, right? So uh, I think it's better to use a simple example. Let's say we only consider in the xy plane. Now this becomes a 2D square. If we only consider the xy plane, let's only only focus on the shear uh, shear stress because normal stress they, they, they do not need to be the same. Um, so for the shear stress on the xy plane, we have the tau yx tau xy. And of course, tau yx here and tau xy. This is uh, now we just want to use a uh, simple situation to demonstrate why uh, some components should be the same to maintain the equilibrium. So for this one, if we only consider the xy plane or let's say the z plane, uh, then the structure, if the structure is in equilibrium, it basically means that, okay, the moment about the Z axis, about Z axis rotation about the Z axis uh, should be equal to zero. And you can consider for this uh, square I draw here, the Z axis is the axis that is perpendicular to the screen, right? And now if I want the moment about the axis equal to zero, then we know that, okay, tau xy here and tau xy here, it will generate a couple to rotate the, your square in a counterclockwise direction. And the tau yx, tau yx will generate a clockwise rotation, right? For the structure. And to be, to make it, um, in equilibrium, we want to make sure that the counterclockwise rotation, the moment, and the clockwise uh, moment should be the same. So in this way, we know that uh, for we need to convert the force and then convert the moment. So stress convert to force, we need to multiply by the cross-section area. Let's say uh, we assume the cross-section area is delta A. So tau xy times delta A. Let's assume that this one and this one forms a couple. And tau xy times delta A means the force. And for the moment, we need to multiply the moment on the, this distance, right? So let's assume the length, this length, let's use different color. Uh, so length of the edge it's a minus tau yx. And since it's a cube, so cross-section area is also delta a, and then length is lowercase a. And this should be equal to zero. So now we know that, okay, so tau xy should be equal to tau yx. And similarly, we can get to the same conclusion if you choose different plane, let's say XZ plane, ZY plane, and um, we can get the same conclusion that tau XZ equal to tau ZX and tau YZ equal to tau ZY. So now we know that, okay, it, it is true that for a state of stress at a point, at a specific point, we have 
nine components. We have nine components, but they are not all independent. So we know that we already proved that this one should be equal to this one. And similarly, we can prove that this one, tau xz equal to tau zx. And same thing, we can also use the same method to prove that tau zy equal to tau yz. So for the set stress nine components, we only have six independent components. So if no, we know this six value, we know the state of stress at that point, right? I think it's better to write it here. Um, Oh, only, I don't know, only six independent stress components. So it can be uh, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, and tau x y, tau z x, tau y z. So this is the state of stress at the point. Uh, what is the subscript means? Uh, how to describe the state of stress at a point and how many independent components in this three by three matrix. So. Uh, I think this is a, a very good foundation for your future class. Um, uh, I think if you understand this one, it's, it's, not, it's not very complicated because, well, it just stress on which plane, in which direction, right? So now let's use this, uh, any, okay, any question for this part? Any place that you feel confused? Okay, so if you guys are okay with that one, now let's assume that these are the three graphs that we uh, we used before. Um, but for the class today, what I want to ask is that, okay, let's first start from this one. If the structure is already in this way and this is the uh, coordinates, and we know that there are shear stress uh, generated in this fastener, right? There's a tension in the bar. So the fastener will experience shear stress. So how do we write this shear stress component? What are the two subscripts? We know that is tau. And what are the subscript for the stress? Here, if this is the coordinates. Anybody? Tau x, y, tau y, z, tau z, x. X, z. X, z. And in the chat, tau y, x. Which one is correct? Thank you. Um, so which one is correct? Is it tau x z or tau y x? It should be tau y x, right? Because if you consider the shear stress, the shear stress is actually, well, uh, the shear stress should be on this plane. Let's say if you cut through this, this uh, point, um, it should be on this plane and then in this direction, right? Because that is what is the uh, tensile, tensile force in the bar. So this plane is a plane that is perpendicular to the y axis. And this direction is x direction. So the first subscript is the plane, it should be y. And second subscript is the x. 
So it should be this one, tau y x. How about the second one? If now this is how the structure oriented, and again, this is the uh, coordinates. What is the stress, shear stress component? Zx. Thank you. So this is basically, okay, now the plane is uh, perpendicular to the z-axis and uh, again, the direction, the component stress component direction is still in the x direction. And this one. What is the shear stress? Y plane X direction. Thank you. So the shear stress is on this plane, and this is a Y plane, right? And it is in this direction, X direction, tau Y X. How about this one? GY. Thank you. So uh, again, it is a Z plane. So it is playing perpendicular to the Z axis and it is in the Y direction, right? No matter positive Y, negative Y, they're in the Y direction. So this is a tau ZY. Uh, so I just want to, you to understand this one, uh, this part, it is, it's a very important foundation. Uh, any question here? So this is a uh, exam problem uh, last year. Uh, I think I talk about this one in terms of when I when I talk about the uh, static review. So when I said this is a uh, two force member and everything, and we can do the force equipment for the first step and then calculate the how to calculate dimension and everything. So this part uh, you can check out the class later. Um, this is not topic today, but uh, something you probably need to know to prepare for your exam anyway. So now the question is the second one. So for this structure, uh, let's ignore this detailed finger here because it rotate to show you what is the shear stress actually is, but let's ignore that one. If the structure is oriented this way in these coordinates, what is the stress component of shear stress at pin? If um, what are the shear stress components here? Anybody? C Y and C S. Thank you. So we should have. Oh, let's use red color. Tau Z y and tau zx. Be careful here, z plane is easy. The plane is uh, in the screen direction or uh, it's perpendicular to the zx direction. And this one, we have reaction force in the x direction and the y direction. And also this also is not just in the x. So it has x component and y component. So if the shear force has X component and Y component, the shear stress also has X component and a Y component. That's why we have both tau ZX and tau ZY. Um, so this is for uh, this part and any question, if no question, I can move forward to the next topic. So, now let's check. Since we know all the subscript and everything, I think it's easier to talk about the shear strain. Um, so everything we talked about before was like uh, the delta and uh, the elongation and uh, 
the strain epsilon, they are in tension compression. They are um, so it's like normal force, normal stress, normal strain. And now we're gonna talk about okay, what the definition of a shear strain? So uh, this is in chapter two point seven shear strain. Um, so for the normal strain, it's like elongation over the origin length. So because, well, normal stress, normal force, they cause the elongation in the X direction or um, in three dimension. But shear strain is more like they, they do not elongate in any dimension. They just change the angle, right? So um, let's say, if I have a structure like this, and then I apply a shear force, the shear force is parallel to the, uh, the surface where the force applied. And now it does not make like contractional uh, elongation of the structure, but it can change its angle here, right? So let's say it's, non, it's originally a 90 degree angle and now apply shear force this angle changed. So I think the best way to describe this shear strain is by uh, describe how this angle change. So um, the definition shear strain is the reduction of the interior angle formed by the two phases that is over ended toward the X, uh, the, let's say tau XY, uh, let's use tau XY. Of course, if you know that definition of tau XY uh, and the gamma XY, um, you know, all the like X, Z, Y, Z, everything. So let's use gamma XY. So gamma xy means a uh, strain xy. And so this one means the reduction of interior angle formed by two two faces oriented towards the positive x and a y axis. So for the one here, we know that if there are some shear force applied and it has shear stress, this one, this one, tau xy and everything. And then the corresponding gamma xy is a reduction of this angle, right? So it's interior angle fold, uh, formed by two phases that oriented towards the x and the y axis. So it can be either this angle or this angle. And of course, after deformation, this angle, this angle, they are same. And the reduction of this angle is, let's use this one. So it's originally 90 degree. Uh, let me try it in a better way. So let's say this is the original angle. Uh, it is 90 degree. And now after the shear force, the angle decreased and the reduction of this angle is defined as shear strain gamma xy. Um, so 
So uh, this is the definition of a shear strain. Of course, it can also be the angle here. If there's a original, let's say if this is defined as original 90 degree, right? And there is a reduction angle here, it's the same thing. Um, so uh, for this shear strain, we also have like two, uh, two basic concept here, uh, just in case if in future people talk to you like what is a simple shear, what is a pure shear, you need to understand what it is. So for this one, we call it simple shear. And this one is a pure shear. So simple shear is basically as what I just demonstrated. So the bottom surface doesn't change, let's say it's fixed and apply shear force on top surface. And then uh, this is simple shear. And the pure shear, um, you can imagine that, okay, uh, this point, I fix this point, but I pull, if this somehow I have this, uh, I can pull this one, this, this point, and then it will deform like this. And this is the pure shear. And of course, you can also consider pure shear is a simple shear and then I rotate it, right? So in terms of shear strain, it is the same. You just, uh, you need to know what is simple shear and pure shear. Um, so as you can see that for the uh, shear strain, in simple shear is this angle, right? Reduction of the interior angle. So it's this angle. And for the pure shear, it's this angle plus this angle. So in the end, uh, it's the same. And now we know the shear strain. Uh, we want to make a connection between the shear stress, shear strain, right? Uh, so in the end, we can calculate everything by giving the loading condition and everything. So we know that Hooke's law for the axial loading, we have the stress equal to Young's modulus times the strain. And similar here, we have the stress equal to shear modulus times strain. Tau xy equal to g times gamma xy. And g here is a shear modulus. And of course, this is also based on the assumption that the deformation is uh, within the proportional limit. So the deformation is very small. Uh, the illustration figure here, of course, it always show that the deformation is very large, but uh, in real situation, we only do, do research for small deformation. If the deformation is large and there's plastic deformation, we consider it's already failed. And it's not our job. is within, within the proportional limit. So if you remember, um, I think I draw something like this before, uh, stress strain diagram, the curve, there's a, a strain line. And after strain line, uh, they are like uh, yielding or something depend on plastic or brittle material. Um, and we only focus on in this linear region. So that's why we have the stress equal to a constant times strain, right? And so this is a stress, this is a strain. And this constant G is a slope. And uh, we always have the assumption that everything we will do for this semester is within the proportional limit. And since it's within proportional limit and a small definition, uh, deformation, uh, we have a mathematical approximation. So if this angle is very small, the angle is equal to tangent gamma, right? No matter what angle is, tau x, y, tau y, z, tau z, x, doesn't matter, right? So remember that uh, probably you learn 
middle school, high school, if the angle is very small, uh, gamma equal to tangent gamma, and it, we can also assume that time gamma is equal to sine gamma and cosine gamma equal to one. That's the assumption when the angle is very small. Um, so now uh, for, of course, this is everything we based on the tau xy, tau, uh, tau, x, tau, tau xy, gamma xy. And similarly, we can have the tau yz equal to g gamma yz and tau zx equal to g shear modulus times shear strain gamma zx. And similar as Young's modulus, shear modulus is also a material property. So problem probably will give you, okay, what is material made of? Uh, for this structure, what is material and what is uh, shear modulus? So this is something that uh, you can use, the give information that you can use. So for the conceptual part, I don't think it's like very complicated, but you just need to be clear that it's in reduction of the interior angle and for the string. And if, uh, let's move on to the example problem directly. So I think I have, I will see. Example one. Uh, so the plastic block uh, show is has a rigid support and a vertical plate. And the force is 55 kips. And the for the material is the plastic. So basically me this part is subject to shear, shear force, shear stress, right? And the shear modulus is given as 150 KSI. And we need to determine the deflection of the plate. So the deflection of plate basically means when this force is applied, how much this plate will move downward. And given information, we have the force, the magnetic force, of course, all the dimensions and um, shear modulus of this gray area. So how do we determine the deflection of plate? So let's, let's first define a coordinate here. It's just gonna be easier for us to uh, well in in terms of calculation, we don't need um, coordinates, but just to explain, easier to explain, let's uh, assume that force applied, the direction of force applied is x direction, and then thickness direction is y direction, and then x, y, z, of course, out of screen is the z direction. And then let's assume that let's take the uh, a plane in the x y plane. So let's assume let's only consider this plane and put it as two D. We can write the relation between the shear strain and the deflection of plate. So we are talking about this plane and it also this one here. So originally it's a rectangular shape and now it's an angle changed. And we know that the definition of the shear strain is the reduction of the interior angle of the two plane that are facing in the positive x, y direction, let's say tau x, y. Uh, then this one, this is different. This should de be defined as the gamma shear strain, right? And the deflection, deflection of the plate, this question asked should be this distance. This is the deflection of plate. So if we know, if we can draw it in this way and everything becomes very clear because we know that shear strain and the deflection plate is data and the thickness is given. 
is two inch is also the thickness here, right? So uh, I think it becomes much more clear. So now let's say the question asks the data and we know that the, the equation that can connect the shear strain and the delta is uh, in, this end, in this triangle equal to delta divided by the thickness. This is two inch, this dimension is two inch, right? Tangent gamma equal to delta divided by two. And as I said, for small deformation assumption, the angle is very small, tangent gamma equal to gamma. So this is a um, shear strain. So now we have a relation between the deflection of the plate and the shear strain. And in this equation, we know that the gamma is equal to shear strain equal to shear stress divided by shear modulus, right? And shear modulus is given. So the only thing we need to calculate is what is the shear stress? Um, shear stress, stress always force divided by area. So we need to figure out what is the shear force, what is the area. So from this one, question ask deflection, we need to figure out what is the shear strain. For the shear strain equation, we need to figure out what is the shear stress. And for shear stress, we use shear force divided by area. So we can solve it step by step. Say so this is a step one. Step two, step three. So the first one, tau equal to V over A. Shear force, of course, it is the P, right? It's a force applied uh, uh, downward, let's say in the X direction. So um, this one is easy. P is 55 keeps Let's change it to convert to pound. And area, what is the area we should use here based on the given dimension? What should be the area we use here to calculate shear stress? Anybody? Three point two, four point eight. Yes. So now this is uh, three five eight zero point seven psi. Now second step, shear strain equal to shear stress divided by shear modulus, plug in all the values, 3580.7, shear modulus 150 KSI, convert to PSI, 23.87, 10 to negative three radius. So the unit of shear strain is same as unit of angle. So it's basically dimension is. Um, and the third step, deflection, data equal to two gamma equal to forty-seven point seven inch. So this is how we solve the deflection of the plate. Um, for given material property, for given loading condition, and given structure. Um, so basically, uh, using the content we learned today, we connect everything, right? Um, second problem. Uh, so this one, uh, again, shear modulus given, and 
the structure to talk about here is this one. So the beam must not displace more than, okay. They put the constraint of the deflection. The displacement of this beam should not be higher than uh, this one. And then the external force is given here. So, and also another constraint, okay. The shear and stress should be smaller than 60 PS, uh, PSI. So basically this, this problem, okay, this is a structure that has there's a I beam on top and there are, there's a structure, the gray area here uh, is a, a structure that is subject to shear force. Um, and then the requirement is that the beam should not, uh, displacement should not exceed in this one and the shearing stress in the gray region should not be higher than this one. And we need to determine what is allowable dimension B and what is allowable dimension A. A and B are here. So of course, to calculate A and B, we need to know that, okay, for the first one to calculate B, which, which quantity that constrain the B determine the B dimension? Shear strain, shear stress, what, do you do? what it is. If we want to determine the dimension B, which part, which component we need to consider is, is constrained by stress, shear stress or shear strain or anything else. Anybody? Stress, yes, thank you. So, because we know that, okay, let's say we have a P applied through the beam to the, the gray thing. And then this B dimension is basically is the area where the shear force applied. So the B dimension is actually determining what is the stress, right? So we know that uh, here. Um, the shear force divided by 8B should be smaller than the shearing stress. The shearing stress should be smaller than 60 PSI. So this is how we calculate the allowable B. And for the A, what should be the constraint? How do we determine the A dimension? It's a strain, right? Deformation, yes. Deformation caused by shear stress is strain. Yes, thank you. So it's basically, okay, now uh, let's, let's assume that we are consider this one. And then there's angle here, reduction of angle after apply the shear stress, uh, shear force, there's a reduction angle here. And this angle is, um, it can, we can make a relation with uh, deflection and A, as we talked about in previous example problem. And then this is actually the constraint for determining the A dimension. So um, let's do it step by step. So the first one, we know stress in the structure is equal to shear force divided by the area and the shear force is five And two, three, right? Yes, five kicks. Um, and area is A times B. And this should be smaller than 60 PSI. So B should be greater than 10.4 inch. And for the part B, when you determine the thickness, I think it's better that. Uh, Let's draw this one, put in a 2D, it's much easier to see. So they said this is after the shear force, after deformation. 
and we are talking about this area. And this dimension is B. And the deflection of the plate should be this one. So this is the deflection of plate. And this one should be smaller than 3 8 And this dimension is A. And this angle, this is a reduction angle. It's original 90 degree. And now after shear force, uh, the angle changed and the reduction angle here, this is a gamma. This is a shear strain. So now again, we can write the shear strain equal to gamma equal to tangent gamma, which is equal to, which is the delta divided by A, right? And for the shear strain, we know well, the question asks a delta. The constraint is delta, so we need to calculate the shear stress, shear strain first. So shear strain is equal to shear stress divided by shear modulus. Shear stress already calculated, right? It is here. Um, well, we can we can plug in uh, b equal to this value, and into the equation we calculate that one. That's why we need to determine the b first. So, oh, sorry, we need to use this to allowable. It's the same thing. So the allowable shear stress is sixty. Of course, if you plug in this one, it's the same thing, right? Because that one is calculated based on the 60. And the shear modulus is equal to 130. So this one is equal to 461.5, 10 to negative three. As you can see from the magnitude, it's very small. This angle is very small, radians. And now uh, data is equal to shear strain times A equal to smaller than the deflection of the plate must not more than three eighth inch. So we can calculate A should be smaller than three A four six one point five ten to negative three point A one three inch. So uh, this is the second example problem. Um, so from this one, I think the most important thing is that we need to know what area we use in calculation for each, let's say for shear stress, what area should we use? So the shear stress is basically uh, this area, right? But when we talk about the uh, shear strain and angle chain and deflection of plate, we need to use something like this. So it's different area uh, and different dimension. You need to be very clear. Um, what dimension to you use in the calculation? Uh, any question for this problem? I actually have a quick question. Yeah. Um, is gamma is like tangent of gamma always going to be equal to gamma? It's tangent. Uh, sorry, could you please repeat the question again? Will like the tangent of gamma always be equal to gamma? Can you oh, just okay. always make that substitution? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, because this is based on the assumption that uh, everything we learned this semester or your undergrad classes uh, is always small deformation. And for small deformation, we always have this assumption. This okay. is a mathematical assumption based on small deformation, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other question?
So this is, uh, again, uh, whenever you see some X uh, in the problem, it is uh, either quiz problem or exam problem. So this is the exam problem last year. Um, and uh, I think the first one is kind of very similar. And so uh, we have seven minutes. Um, I think I can do it. So this one, I think everything is given like very straightforward. Uh, we have the force applied on this, on this rubber block and it's in the positive Z direction and uh, all dimensions are given and shear modulus is given and calculate the deflection of the surface of top surface. So uh, since it's very similar, so I will do it very quickly. Uh, we force calculate the stress, then calculate the strain. And for using the strain, we can find the relation between the deflection and the strain, right? So stress is equal to force divided by area. And let's assume x equal to zero, 10 to the fourth. And area, so what is the area should we use here? It's 0.1 times 0.2, right? It is this area. When we have the stress, when we have the shear modulus, we can calculate the uh, strain. Strain is equal to stress divided by shear modulus, plug in. And shear modulus is equal to 10 megapascal. And this is uh, radians. And the deflection of the top surface. Uh, so again, we use gamma equal to 10 to gamma equal to deflection of top surface divided by t. So now we are using this one to find the relation of the top uh, deflection of top surface and the shear strain. So it's basically the change of angle here, right? It's originally 90 degree. Now with this shear force, this angle changed and this reduction of angle become the shear strain. And so this length is a uh, uh, deflection of the top surface. And we know the thickness is 0.1. So sorry, we need to calculate data. Data equal to T times gamma. Uh, we plug in thickness 0.01 times 0.05 meter. So this is the first uh, part. And second part, find the corresponding the gamma x, y, gamma y, z, gamma z, x. So what is gamma x, y? Anybody? Zero. Thank you. What is the uh, gamma YZ? Yes. Point oh five. What is the uh, gamma ZX? Thank you. Um, so, so since the force is only applied on the y plane in the z direction, so the only 
non-zero shear stress, shear strain is gamma yz. And there's no force in other shear force applied in other direction, or the other shear stress, shear strain component should be zero. So this is why the gamma xy, which is should be a strain on x plane, uh, well, the reduction angle in the xy um, formed by the plane of xy facing the xy direction and the gamma zx, they all should be zero because there's no shear force shear stress in that direction. The shear strain in that direction should also be zero. The only non-zero one is the stress, shear stress or shear strain caused by this force. Um, any question for uh, this problem? Um, so if no question, uh, thank you for coming to us today and have a great weekend. Bye, thank you. Um, Professor, I had a question for this problem. Yeah. Uh, for, how did you know to use like that value of T? I know like it comes from the 10 millimeters of like the thickness, but how did you know it was supposed to be like um, that dimension? Yes, that's, that's why I said you need to uh, be very careful of the, all the area here. So uh, when we talk about the deformation, we normally use this, this area, right? Right. Yes. The shear stress, shear strain, we use this area. And let's say it's originally, this is original 90 degree. And now after deformation, let's assume that it becomes this one, right? So there's a reduction of angle here. Okay, I see now. And now this edge becomes the T. So this T is equal to this one. Got it, thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Also for the exam, hmm. uh, cause like I, the textbook we use mirrors a lot like the statics textbook. It's like yeah. the same writers and stuff. Would you recommend going over like textbook problems to review? Uh, for the exam? Yeah. Well, I would say that if you are not familiar with the statics, everything that part, it's, it's really hard to solve the any exam problem because that is always the first step. So I, I would highly recommend that. Yes, it's a really great idea that you, you go over all the statics uh, first. Okay. If you screw up the first step, there's no way you can make the following step correct. Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great holiday. Thank you, you too. Professor? Yep. Someone also asked in the chat, um, will there be a formula sheet that yes. we could use for the exam? Yes, I, I will I will provide. So I will provide and I will post when I have it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good weekend. You too. Uh Professor. Yep. Um the exam's gonna be at eight o'clock right seven or, to nine. Oh, seven, seven, to nine. seven seven to nine all right yes. thank you you're welcome